What's up, everybody? Going to move some things around to here right now, but hey, Grant McCaslin, officially the head coach of Texas Tech men's basketball, just got announced right now. Obviously, the introduction is what I mean by that. We're going to talk about a lot of things, right? There was a lot of interesting points in there um, from Grant. Also, it was cool to hear from Norrin Sodiase. Um, he came up on stage and impromptu, uh, I guess, going on stage. They Kirby wanted him to come on stage, and he got Texas Tech fans all riled up. But if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, share it as well. Going to be talking Texas Tech men's basketball and kind of what we know about certain things and what we can speculate on, right? Because there was some things that were interesting that Grant McCaslin said, obviously some things that Kirby Hocutt said. But really, the biggest thing about this was which players – we're at this press conference. And again, I don't think that should be the end all be all of who is staying and who is leaving. I'm not trying to say that at all, but it is interesting to see which guys were there. Um, but be sure to let, get the conversation going. Let me know in the chat what kind of stood out to you guys. I'm going to start out with what Kirby did bring Norrence Odiase to the stage. And my first thought was, man, whenever Norrence is done playing, man, like, Grant McCaslin better give him a damn job on staff whenever he wants it. Um, Norrence is the real deal. Hell of an ambassador for Texas Tech. So I wanted to give him his shine on that front. Um, but Norrence said, you know, McCaslin is it. He's one of us. And, you know, obviously it's big hearing that from Norrence. But it's also big seeing all of those ties with Texas Tech that Grant McCaslin has. And they're damn near endless. It felt like so Kirby Hoka brought the family onto the stage for those that weren't watching um, three of his children. The other one was in college taking an exam. She uh, was the butt of the joke by Grant um, saying that, wow, dad doesn't mean too much to you. I guess a test is more important. Obviously, he was joking. Um, but it was interesting to see that because his wife played soccer at Texas Tech. And for those that don't know the backstory of Grant and his wife, they are actually, funny enough, from my hometown of Irving, Texas. She she went to MacArthur High School, the high school I went to, and then Grant went to rival high school, Irving High School, right? And he talked about how they actually made this work, how they met each other, and how they did prom and everything. And the real reason why he wanted to come out to Texas Tech to get his master's degree was because she was out here. And it was really just telling to see all these Texas Tech ties that he has. And I'm one of those guys where it's like, hey, Texas Tech ties shouldn't be the end all be all. But listen, when you have Texas Tech ties and you're a proven winner at a high level, I don't really give a damn if it's at a mid-major level. That is a high level to me. When you were winning 70% of your games, that's a plus, right? Like, and again, it feels like this is going to be a live where we're talking and everything. And it's one of those deals where, um, you know, it's, hey, he won the press conference and all that. It's just a press conference. Let's not overblow it. It's like, yeah, but that's what we have in front of us. So that's what we're going to talk about. Right. Like he hasn't he hasn't done anything as a coach yet here at Texas Tech. But you have to like the energy that he brings and the understanding of the culture of West Texas. Right. He was a coach at Midland junior college. He he talked about how he drove a bus all over West Texas, even named a couple of towns um, out in West Texas, but he knows the culture and he knows what is important to the people of West Texas. And now it kind of feels like, all right, enough with this uh, press conference stuff. And I'm not trying to, you know, just blow past it or anything. It's, you got to do it. But now at this point, it's like, all right, let's get down to work. Let's get down to business, right? Like who's going to be on your staff? Who are the players coming back? And that was a telltale thing, too. Um, and I thought this was absolutely the right move from Grant McCaslin. The, the first thing he did was thank the players, right? And I know it's a little thing that probably a lot of y'all are like, of course he's going to do that, RC. But you have to understand, he's met some of those guys for and known them for maybe 48 hours, right? So you have to think about that. And he laid it all out on the line. Hey, I'm going to give you everything. And sure, it's coach speak right now. But at the same time, he's going to have to build those relationships. And I think it's telling to see who was there, right? And again, that is not the e-all, end-all type situation, okay? Right? If there's a guy missing, do not take that as, oh, he's gone, right? He may be, but do not take that right now, okay? So 
For those wondering, we're five minutes in. Be sure to hit that like button, and then I'll get to questions after I do this in terms of who were the players at the press conference, right? And you think about it two years ago with Mark Adams, that was a big deal, right? Maybe even more so now it's a big deal because of how late you are in the process of the portal, right? So the guys that were there, you got Karan Lindsay, the Georgia transfer. You got C.J. Williams, um, Corey Williams' son. You got Damarion Williams there as well. Kerwin Walton, Lamar Washington, Daniel Bacho, Jalen Tyson, and then to round out the group, you had Pop Isaacs there as well. So you had a good collection there, right? And that doesn't include Drew Steffi, who's talked about he's coming to Texas Tech as well. But the name that I think a lot of people are going to probably comment on right now in terms of RC, you didn't say his name, it's Devion Harmon, right? And I'm not here to speculate why he wasn't there. Maybe he had class. I don't know. I don't want to even try and put that out there. But he wasn't there. These are the guys that we know were there because they showed them multiple times to begin the press conference. And so, again, let me run through this again. Um, oh, there we go. Dizzy, thank you so much. He got his wisdom teeth taken out. He would have been there then. Uh, thank you, Dizzy. I did not see that. Um, so that's a good point. If I got my wisdom teeth taken out too, I'm I'm not going to that press conference. Sorry, Coach McCaskey. Um, anyway, great point. Thank you, Dizzy, for bringing that up. Um but again, the players there, we're going to run from top to bottom here on the list I have. Pop Isaacs, Jalen Tyson, Daniel Bacho, Lamar Washington, Kerwin Walton, Damarian Williams, CJ Williams, and then Kyron Lindsay. So again, you got you to gotta think right now. Again, you don't have a coach. And there may be some NIL implications to why these guys stick around or stayed around for this long, right? But also at the same time, they wanted to see – who was going to be the next head coach, right? And so there are some ties there. Robert Jennings, he's in the portal right now. Obviously, he wasn't there. He has ties to guys that were on that UNT staff. Um, so does he come back? He has Texas Tech in his top five, right? So you think about who was there, and I think it's maybe not the, you know, hey, they're definitely coming back type deal, but it does say something that these guys were at the press conference. It's obviously a positive, right? And so... That's one thing that really stood out to me. Another thing, and before I get to y'all's questions, I, I, before I get sidetracked by everything, I wanted to point this out too. And I talked about it in a video, I want to say, shoot, was it probably first when Adams got, or when he resigned? I want to say it was like two days, three days afterwards when I had my first Grant McCaslin type video. Um but it was good to hear what Kirby said about this. And I was actually wrong in that video. I uh, sold Coach McCaslin short by one school. He's actually turned down three, yes, three power six schools in the past two years, right? He stayed at North Texas, obviously. But some of those schools, one of them is in the Big 12, didn't go into specifics. And then two are in the SEC, right? I had it on pretty good authority. One of them is Mississippi State. They were pretty heavily involved in him. And then they ended up with going with uh, Coach Jans from uh, New Mexico State, right? I don't know the Big 12 school, and I don't know the other SEC school. I did know that one, right? Um, but I think that's telling, right? I think it's telling that there's a lot of people you'll hear out there saying, oh, Texas Tech didn't get the guy that they wanted. They were shortchanged. Nobody really wanted to come here, so they had to settle for Grant McCaslin. I'm here to tell you right now, and I hope there's no children around you, that's bullshit. Okay, that's bullshit, all right? Texas Tech has had their eye on Grant McCaslin for a long time, and you want to know why they've had his, their eye on him for a long time? He wins. He's a winner. He embodies everything that is Texas Tech. He embodies everything about West Texas, right? He has that history with West Texas, and oh, by the way, he's a proven winner everywhere he's gone. Every year, in the first year, that he's been on that campus, he has improved that team's and that program to at least their highest winning percentage in the top two, I should say. By the way, shout out to Murphy Dog in the background if anybody wants to shout him out in the chat. Shout out to Murph Dog. Anyway, again, in the first year, he's had a top two winning percentage at that school's respective program, right? He's a winner. That's what he does. Again, I know I've been harping on Arkansas State in a couple of videos, but if you can win at Arkansas State, you can win 20 games at Arkansas State. By the way, that's their only 20-win season 
in 25 years, a quarter of a century, and he did that in year one after the year previously, they won eight games. You have my respect because Jonesboro is a shithole, okay? And I mean that there's no way to say that respectfully. It's just a bad place. You can't win there, right? And he did. And I think that it's telling that he goes to a place like North Texas, a place that is not a basketball school by any stretch of the imagination. You know, when you live in the Metroplex and you grow up here, right, North Texas is a complete afterthought. I mean, when you think about sports in the Metroplex, UNT is probably outside the top 10, right, if you include professional sports. So to win here, to do that, and Denton is an interesting place for those that don't know, right? And he goes in there, and he is – this is not a hyperbole. He is the greatest coach in UNT basketball history. Like, that is not from me. That is a – from a few of my friends that have covered UNT when they were in school, now work professionally in sports media, they tell me that, like, hey, dude, can you stay away from Grant McCaslin? That was the one thing they didn't want to happen, right? Each and every one of them have told me, hey, that is the best coach that UNT has ever had. It is not close, all right? So a lot of positive. Let me get to y'all's thoughts real quick. And, again, shout-out to Dizzy in here. I did not see that about Devion Harmon, but the reason – Devion Harmon wasn't there, according to him and his Twitter as well. Um, he got his wisdom teeth taken out. So get well uh, soon there, Devion. I haven't really had any big dental type stuff, but I can only imagine it probably sucks. Um, this from Noah McCaslin already got me fired up, as he should. It's fun, man. Like, I, I don't get the hater aspect of it. Um, you know, if you want to hate on the guy after a year or two of losing, by all means. But if you look at his track record, he's – And again, I'm not trying to say he is going to be Chris Beard, but if you look at his track record, he's far more proven at the, at the mid major level, far more proven, um, simple and plain. He's a winner. Everybody in Texas loves him at the high school level. He's well-respected nationally as well. Um, and he comes from the Scott Drew tree. And as we know right now in college basketball, there may not be a better tree to be a part of. Then Scott Drew, you think about Jerome Tang, you think about Paul Mills, Grant McCaslin. Um, we'll talk about an assistant coach right now on the Baylor staff that may be coming to Texas Tech. Following Grant McCaslin, a friend of his, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I want to answer some of y'all's questions first. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and get in this chat. I'll be here as long as y'all are feeding me questions. Um, talking Texas Tech men's hoops tonight before the national championship game. This from Chris Salazar. How you doing, RC? Enjoyed the introductory press conference. Hopefully we can get some of those new transfers to join the team. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the portal. Um, you see some of the guys, and I want to go over to my Twitter just to make sure that I get some of these names right and I'm not um, butchering them. I may butcher how they're they're pronounced. Let's be real. I do that all the time. But um, – you know, you think about it, LJ Cryer went in there, Max went in there for Moral Roberts. I, I expect him, maybe he goes to Wichita State, follows Paul Mills. Uh, but I guarantee you every uh, program in the country is going to want him, right? Every program in the country is going to want him. Um, and then you've got Noah Thompson, um, Thomason, excuse me, um, from Niagara. He's been reached out by a plethora of schools, including Texas Tech, 6'3", guard, um, one year of eligibility left, was top 35 in the country. When it came to scoring, Texas Tech is interested um, and really right now, if I'll be honest with you, everything I've heard about it, they're obviously going to hit the portal. But Grant McCaslin is set on trying to keep those guys that are currently on the roster there that he wants there or that want to be there. Right. Like he wants to keep those guys Um, because let's face it, Texas Tech has a talented group of guys. It's just last year, you know, obviously the injuries didn't go your way. Um, And at the same time, you think about um, kind of the schemes and the lack of adjustment, right? That's the big thing about Grant McCaslin. I've talked about multiple avenues, whether it's here on the channel or whether that's over on the Twitter spaces. Follow me on Twitter at RCMB323. He he doesn't have an ego when it comes to what his players are good at. He's going to put his players in the proper position to succeed. It doesn't matter if that's something that he needs to adjust to as a coach. That's a problem for him. And you've seen that at UNT and other stops along the way as well. Um, Big Bing fan. I don't I don't know what that, that feels kind of inappropriate. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Um, hope Coach Darby can stay. He did such a great, great job with these guys and great enthusiasm on the bench. Thank you, RC, for having this. Yeah. No, I. That, that's another thing that I think is so difficult right now. And almost Texas Tech, they aren't behind the eight ball 
um, per se, but they're up against it, I guess, the clock, I should say, um, when it comes down to you got to think the portal closes, I believe, on May 11th, maybe May 13th. It's a 60-day window from when it opened, and it opened back on the 13th of March. So you think about that. You got 60 days to have the portal open if you want that guy to be eligible for next season, right? So Texas Tech has obviously used about a month of that, um, just a little under it. You got about 40 days left of the portal, right? So you're going to obviously go and hit the portal hard. You look at what UNT has done. They've done a great job at portaling. Um, I think that's a verb now. Maybe I'm wrong. It sounds cool. It sounds right. We're going to go with it. Um, but you look at what they've done. They've done it at the junior college ranks. They've done it at the low mid-major ranks. They've done a great job of bringing in guys and making sure they get acclimated quickly. The thing is now you have to have Grant McCaslin in there, and he's got to get his staff. And we'll talk about the staff a little bit later on. Um, in terms of some of the names that are being circulated around and some of the names that are probably um, just point blank, not likely anymore. Um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit after I get through all of these questions, um, and then we'll go from there. Um, this from Gabriel. Um, I'm glad Norris was involved. This dude is one of the best ambassadors for Texas Tech. Yeah, I saw some people saying, why is Norris Odiase involved? I thought that was, you know, this is not a disrespectful thing to Joey McGuire uh, Dusty Womble or even Kirby Hocutt. But like, to me, the most important person on there was Norris Odiase. And the reason being was this, he was a player. He knows what he wants to, he knows what he looks for in a coach and who he wants to be coached by. He knows what West Texas needs in a coach, right? Right. He, he knows all of these things and he knows what these players, these younger guys want in a coach, right? Like it or not, you don't have to agree with the players all the time. Right. But you he knows what they want. He's closer to their age than any of those guys by damn near double. Right. So you think about what he's done. He's a professional. He knows how to get to the next level. Right. He's in the G League for the Mavs. Um, their season's over. But hey, it is what it is. Um, and he knows what it takes to get there. Right. To the place where Texas Tech wants to be. And he knows what these guys are looking for at the high school level, at the college level, whether they're in the portal or not. He knows what these guys will be looking for. And to have him come out and endorse Grant McCaslin so heavily and say he's the guy, he's one of us, he gets what it means to be a Red Raider in West Texas, I think that was arguably the most telling, really just anything said there today, damn near, outside of maybe Kirby Hocutt saying, um, he turned down three other power six jobs, but still just unbelievable type stuff um, from Norn Sodiase. And I, like I said, to begin the live, like, hey, like if he wants a job on the staff, put him on the damn staff whenever he wants to. Whenever that day comes, he doesn't want to play professional basketball, bring him back to the 806 and put him on staff. I think he could have like a Daryl Dora type impact in terms of coaching. I really, truly do for Texas Tech. Um, this from old Texas Tech, man, I saw – Pop, Bacho, Tyson saw pretty much all except for Jennings, Fisher, Fardaz. KJ wasn't there. And then Devion wasn't there either. Um, Dizzy said it was because he said on Twitter that it was because of his wisdom teeth. And by all means, I wouldn't be there either if my wisdom teeth were getting take, taken out. From the sneaker man himself, um, great press conference. Time to see the full staff. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I promise I just want to answer all y'all's questions, or at least most of them before we get into that and what I know about the staff and kind of who they're talking about. Uh, this is from Alfredo. This is outside of basketball, but I'm generally impressed by your speech and public speaking skills. You speak so well without multiple cuts or edits. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I did not. I thought that was going to be a basketball question. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Um, listen, my biggest advice in terms of somebody making a video, if you mess up, obviously editing is cool, but make fun of yourself. Self-deprecating humor goes a long damn way, man. Um, it really does. Uh, appreciate the very kind comment, Alfredo. Really means a lot. Um, Nathan, hey, RC, love the hire, but can feel a lot of the fan base is skeptical with the wait and see. I mean, that's that's what you got to do, though, right? Like, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to be the guy where it's like, what else do you expect to do? But like, what else do you expect to do, right? You know, um, it it's one of those things where you got to remember this is going to be happening very quickly by the way, right? You got to think about it. He's got to get a staff and he's got to keep players here. He's got to go portaling. He's going to try and keep some of those freshmen that are coming in. Jason Jackson, obviously Drew Steffi already said that he's going to be a Red Raider regardless. You know, he's trying to get this mix together and kind of 
put the puzzle together almost while he's free falling into the summer, right? And so I think he's going to do a good job of that, right? But this staff is going to happen relatively quickly. I would be pretty surprised if, in all honesty, we don't know who a majority of the staff is by Friday. Like, I think we're going to know a lot by this week because you have to. You have to get these guys in here. Sadly, they're probably going to be living in hotels away from their family for a little bit, right? And then it's, hey, you're in the summer. And once the summer hits, guys, it's full steam ahead. It might as well damn near be basketball season because you got to get these guys in classes. They're going to be taking nine to 12 credit hours in each summer. So summer one and summer two, that way they don't have to take a full course load during the fall and the spring. And they still have that full year, right? You think about it. You have to take 13 or 30 credit hours a year to be a full student, right? Well, you obviously don't want your guys doing that you know, taking all of those classes during fall and spring when they're trying to focus on the game and they won't be in the classroom as much. So what they do is they kind of, I wouldn't say load up in the summer, but they take more classes in the summer to help ease the burden of classwork in those respective semesters. So I know that was a long-winded way to say this is going to move fast and the wait and see and all that stuff. But, and I think Nathan, you might even be talking about the standpoint of wait and see in terms of winning games. Listen, he's won games everywhere he's damn been. What do you want him to do? What, what do you want him to do? Win 80%, 90%, 100%? What do you want him to do? He's won 70.2% of his games in his college career as a coach. That's elite, period. End of story. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm kind of on the camp, Nathan. I think this is a great hire. Um, I can definitely admit I was skeptical at first. I knew he would be the odds-on favorite guy to win it because he was in it the last time with Darvin Ham and Mark Adams, right? So him being the odds on favorite was not surprising to me. Him getting the job really wasn't surprising to me either. But the thing is with me, when it comes down to it, this guy knows how to coach and he coaches at an elite level. He gets the absolute most out of his players. And if you want to go look and not trust me, go look at his stats, go listen to his players. They know far more about him than I do, even though we are from the same hometown. So there you go. That would be my thing there. I know that was long winded, Nathan. Uh, thank you for uh, commenting, man. Uh, this from Dustin. What's up, man? Uh, loved hearing about the group of guys that was there. Would love to see Fisher and Jennings back. Yeah, I think Jennings has a, a solid chance to come back. Again, he's got connections to Grant McCaslin, knows him well. Um, again, he got, you know, Virginia's of the world, Utah's of the world, a couple other schools in the top five for him. Um, I think Robert Jennings personally has done this absolutely to perfection in terms of how to go portaling properly, right? Like, go in there, keep your options open. Don't just, you know, burn a bridge at the school you were at previously because he obviously liked Texas Tech, right? Don't burn that bridge. Go in there, see your options, wait for that coach, interact with that coach, get to see who the coach is, meet the other coaches as well, and then make an informed decision about the information you have at hand and not an emotional one, right? I think Robert Jennings has done a phenomenal job. I think Elijah's done a good job too, but he's kind of staying in the weeds a little bit. Um, when it comes to it, but I think there's a solid chance that maybe one or even both of those guys come back. Um, but time will tell. Um, that is for sure. Um, love your Rangers cap. Also sweeping Philly sweet. Hope they can win out. Keep the faith. There you go. Yeah. I was over there last night for the Taylor Swift concert. Um, not at the ballpark, but just an electric type environment. Um, I'm sure y'all are judging me for going to the Taylor Swift concert, but it was lit. Um, no, seriously, she had like fire cannons and stuff. It was super cool. It was super cool. You call, you saw like confetti catch on fire. It was crazy. Um, anyway, um, would he be bringing Jason Terry from UNT? I'm not sure exactly who you'd be being. And let's just jump into the assistant coach stuff now because I know a lot of y'all are probably waiting on that and stuff that I know. Um, again, be sure to like the video, comment y'all's question. I promise. Um, I will definitely try and do my best to answer all y'all's questions. Um, before the fiance gets home and we have to, well, do wedding stuff. So there you go. But let me know again, comment, like the video, share it. Would love to hear from you guys, but let's jump into this assistant coaching stuff and the stuff that I've heard about Texas tech, right? So here's, here's what I know. I would not expect Barrett Peary to be at Texas tech. And it's not because they're not interested in him. It's because of the potential opportunities that coach Peary has at his disposal. Um, he's being looked at for both the Utah State and Utah Valley job. I'm sure some of you guys know that already, um, if you keep tabs on that. 
I think when it's all said and done, he gets one of those jobs, and it's probably going to be Utah Valley. So obviously he's going to take a head coaching job, get back in that rank, because remember, he was a head coach at Portland State, gave up that job to come to Texas Tech. A um, lot went wrong there in terms of just a relationship. And then he went to UNLV. He's got a chance to be a head coach again. I think he ends up taking it. So that's Coach Peary. Um, coach Al Pinkins is the next one that a lot of people are interested in. And he's at Ole Miss right now. There's been a lot of talk, hey, he wants to come back to the 806. I, I think that there's some genuine truth to that. Um, I just don't know if it's going to happen. Um, you know, I think that sometimes, like it or not, new coaches come in and they want a new staff. They just kind of almost want to clear house in a way. Um, and that's not indicative on the other coaches, just – they want their guys, right? Like that's just how it goes. And I think that that might be the situation here. Um, now, obviously, Al has a job too at Ole Miss. So there might be some, uh, you know, paperwork buyout type stuff. I don't even know how that would work. Um, but I think that that might be the case for Grant McCaslin, where he kind of just almost clears house. And again, that's not indicative of how good those coaches are. It's more of, hey, I want to bring my guys in here. Um, some of them anyway, and then go from there, right? So I think that that's kind of the situation with Al Pinkins. Then you've got a couple other names that are kind of heavily involved in this. And one kind of happened this past weekend, um, kind of generated a little bit of buzz, and some people were asking me about it. I talked to some people, and I'll tell you all everything I know on it. Um, but before we get to that person, got to talk about Ben McCollum. I – I think when it's all said and done, like, I don't know. I, I, I think it's one of those deals for me on the Ben McCollum front where there's almost so much smoke, like, it's hard not to believe it. And from everything I've heard, there's genuine interest on both sides. Will it happen? I'm not sure. But him and Grant McCaslin are really good friends. Their families, really good friends. Um and Ben McCollum is one of the most highly regarded coaches in any level of basketball. So obviously there's some interest there from Texas Tech. And I think when it's all said and done on the Ben McCollum front and his him being linked to the Texas Tech staff, I think he's going to be involved until they name an associate head coach or all the assistants are named, right? Like, I think it's that simple for me. Um, I... If you, you know, ask me, hey, RC, you're a betting guy. Do you think Ben McCollum ends up on the staff? I think it's like a coin flip, if we're being completely honest. Um, but that's far higher than I thought it was just, you know, a week ago. To be honest with you, I thought, you know, maybe there was like a 25% chance, 30% chance. Um, I think it's probably like a coin flip. And it would be absolutely electric to bring a guy in like Ben McCollum. I mean, Pro teams are mimicking his offense. Everybody and their mother is trying to mimic his offense at the collegiate level. So uh, definitely would be a guy to monitor. And I know he's been on the, um, you know, message boards or whatever. Definitely in my DMs. People asking me about that on Twitter um, in the comments as well, right? So it's like, okay, like he, he's he's involved. And, and by every account, every person I, I've talked to that is in the know, that knows um, – what's going on with the coaching search a little bit more than me. They've all said, Hey, like he's definitely involved. So there's that. The next name is this. And this guy is actually the guy that I wanted Texas tech to hire as the head coach. So this is kind of crazy. John Jacobs from Baylor, um, associate head coach alongside Alvin Brooks. Um, both of them are associate head coaches there at Baylor. It is picked up over the weekend in the past, like 48, 72 hours that, there is some serious interest between John Jacobs and Grant McCaslin and John Jacobs coming out here to the 806 and being the associate head coach for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Um, I don't know where those talks are at. I don't know if anything will come to fruition, but I do know that they are being had um, at a high level and it would make sense, right? This would allow, and this is what I mean by it would make sense. A lot of people would be like, well, he's leaving you, uh, Baylor, as an associate head coach, to be the associate head coach at Texas Tech, how does that work? Well, he's technically in the co-associate head coach role, role right now, alongside the aforementioned Alvin Brooks III. 
So this would allow Alvin Brooks to be the clear cut associate head coach at Baylor while John Jacobs gets to have that role at Texas Tech. He also has a connection with Grant McCaslin. They are dear friends as well. They've worked together before. They know each other, right? And it probably helps that they know Scott Drew too. So you look at everything there. And again, a lot more assistant coaches are going to be linked to this job. It's going to be heavily, heavily involved in a lot of big names, right? Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we stand right now. So again, the two names that I would probably monitor the most in all of this are Ben McCollum and John Jacobs. I think that if you ask me today, hey, RC, pick one of these two, and this is strictly a guess, people, strictly a guess. Um, from what I know, I would probably say it's more likely Ben McCollum is on there, um, but it would not shock me at all if John Jacobs is uh, a part of the Texas Tech Red Raider men basketball staff next season um, going into 2023-2024. Um, let's see here. This is from Alex. Um Will I be able to watch this later? Yes, you will be. It will be on the channel. Y'all can go back and watch everything I said from there. Um, again, appreciate each and every one of y'all tuning in with me. Um, I know it's a weird time of the day, but wanted to hop on and talk all Texas Tech men's hoop, hear y'all's questions, read them, answer them to the best of my ability. All I ask is you like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. One of those three things, and I am cool with you today. Um, but this from Tom T.T. Rex was very impressed at how many players were there to welcome. Hopeful start. Absolutely. I agree on that front. Um, that was really the big thing I wanted to see was how many players were there. And to for those people that just joined us, um, it was Pop Isaacs, Jalen Tyson, Daniel Bacho, Lamar Washington, Kerwin Walton, Damarian Williams, C.J. Williams, and Kyron Lindsey. Devion Harmon was not there. Shout out to Dizzy once again, um, who said that Devion Harmon – had his wisdom teeth taken out, so that's why he wasn't there. Makes sense. Um, this from Brian. Be curious to learn the Big 12 and SEC teams he said no to. The only one I know is Mississippi State because he was linked to it. That's it. Um, and this was this past year. Um, so I would assume he just turned down the interview or however that process worked, and they ended up with Jans from New Mexico State. Um, but that's the only one I know. It would be very interesting to see – who the big 12 teams were. I mean, you could put the pieces together if you really wanted to, right? Like it was in the past two years, Kirby said. And again, this is all just speculating, trying to figure out the puzzle with you guys, what jobs were open. All right. So you think about it. You had the Kansas state job. Iowa state was open as well. Um, what of the schools were open in the big 12 at that point? I guess Texas, technically Texas tech. Um, but yeah, I would assume, Oh, Oklahoma. There you go. So Oklahoma, Kansas State, Iowa State, probably one of those three schools, if we're being honest about it. Um, but, yeah, nothing confirmed on that front. But he did turn him down, according to Kirby. Uh, this from Bing, Bing Crosby. I'm not a young dude. Well, Bing, I appreciate you being here, my friend. Thank you so much. John, appreciate you uh, tuning into the live. Big guy wise, surely we are looking. Yeah, that I would assume right now when it comes to big man, uh, Texas Tech is going to be in on every conversation. Obviously, the one that UNT just put into the portal as well um, knows Grant McCaslin's system. So would definitely wouldn't surprise anybody if he's um, involved in potentially what Grant McCaslin wants to do. Right. So, um, yeah, I think, again, you got to get the staff ready so you can have guys taking multiple phone calls right now. Technically, Grant McCaslin is the only one on staff. Um, that's officially signed anyway. So you got to go get some guys to help you out. So I'm um, going to be interesting to see where they go. But again, um, I, I truly think that it's going to be a very quick thing. I, I would be legitimately very surprised if we don't know a majority of this staff by Friday. Um, because you got to get this ball rolling. You got to get it quick. This from Drew. I'm curious to see the power sick coaches who reached out to us for the job. Kirby said there were multiple. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this right now, Drew. We will never know. Never know at all. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, and to be fair, I'll say this too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm over here saying, you know, it's a great thing that, you know, Kirby brought up the three schools and everything. Um, that might be exaggerated. It could be exaggerated too that how many people reached out from power six positions. I will say this. Um, there were definitely coaches that did it. Uh, multiple, but at the same time, Texas Tech 
they had a clear vision on what they wanted. And Grant McCaslin was in their sights. Obviously, Paul Mills was one, Andy Kennedy, those kind of guys. So um, they were all going after that. But it, it was very clear early, early on that they made Grant McCaslin a high priority. And it makes sense because he was involved in the in the process just two years ago and was really one of the final three guys um, alongside Adams and Darvin Ham. So uh, you got that. This from Jonah. For real, it's great finally to catch you live. I appreciate you tuning in, Jonah. Uh, this from old Texas Tech man, Rodriguez kid um, from UNT. I'm not sure where that's from. Sorry, it says until. Sorry. Um, Nathan uh, says, I'll probably answer this before you see it, but I'm hoping for Ben McCollum to run his offense with the McCaslin defense. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to um, shout out to Ross Hodge. He deserved that job at UNT. Really good dude. Met him once. Um, again, just met the guy once, but really good dude the time I met him. Um, and he deserves that 20 year veteran coaching, really, really good stuff. Um, was happy to see him get that UNT job. Uh, was a little upset to be honest. I wish he would have came out to Texas Tech, um, with Graham McCaslin, but yeah, Ben McCollum would be sensational to run the offense. I think you would see things that you haven't seen a Texas Tech team run schematically, maybe ever. Um, and you would have a coach that is viewed as one of the elite offensive minds, um, as your associate head coach or your offensive coordinator of sorts. Um, but yeah, it would be really interesting to see how that works um, in terms of who do they go get? And sorry, I'm looking something up real quick. Um, just making sure I got the right player here um, in terms of what the next question is. But I think when you look at best case scenarios, right? Like he's, he's got to be up there. Um, no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. And his offense would be sensational with Grant McCaslin um, defensively. And the thing is about Grant McCaslin's defense, they kind of play like a no middle. Um, that might be trigger words for people. Sorry in advance if it was. Um, but I think really he kind of changes things, right? Like he has that base principle. But if you go back and watch the games they played against Oklahoma State, um UAB and the NIT like they had that but they could change things up to really throw different looks at their opponent and I think that they're just not dead set in their ways and that's arguably the biggest compliment I can give Grant McCaslin is he's just not dead set in his ways um let's see here the next one um this from Flux do we have any good non-con games next year so non-con schedule really hasn't been released all too much um, when it comes down to it, it'll probably happen. Um, you'll probably hear a little bit more of that um, here in, I'd say, probably July. Um, I expect those games. People are going to get mad at it, but I I would expect those Northwestern State games still, a couple of them. But don't be surprised if Texas Tech tries to play one or two more um, Power 6 neutral site games, right? Like you had Maui last year. I don't know if they'll be in another tournament this year because those are pretty much filled up. But um, don't be surprised if they try and play like, for example, when they try to play uh, Gonzaga out in Phoenix. Not saying they're going to play Gonzaga, but something like that, um, where maybe they meet a team halfway or something like that. Um, Alex, Josh Young, baby. No, I wanted to go so bad to Taylor Swift. Yeah, shout out to T Swift. It was it was electric. Um, I think Grant winning the NIT is bigger than advertised as a TCU alum. Jamie Dixon won. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, like, it's weird. Like, people – and I talked about this on a Twitter space last week um, when it became official. Like, what – him winning the NIT is being viewed very poorly for some reason because they didn't make the tournament. And I get it. They didn't make the NCAA tournament. They're in a mid-major. You get one automatic bid, and there was somebody trying to tell me every every you know league gets one automatic bid. Yeah, well, let's be real. That's just not true. Come on, let's let's be real. Um, it may be like and it might be like a fact, but we know the Big Twelve is not going to only have one team. We know the ACC is not going to only have one team. So you got to think about it from that standpoint, right? It, it's so interesting because. I think people would view him higher in terms of if he had just one tournament win and then he was hired, right? So, for example, right, 
let's see they let's say they have that Purdue victory back a couple years ago, and then that it was this year, right? They upset Purdue and Purdue's a four seed. They're a 13 seed. And then Texas Tech hires him. I think people view him tremendously different. To me, I think the NIT was a good thing, mostly because you got to watch him more and you got to see schematically what he got to do on a national stage still. And by the way, shout out to the guys at UNT, because let's face it, this news of Grant McCaslin likely being the hire for Texas Tech came out when they were playing Oklahoma State a few hours before. I promise you they saw that, right? And instead of just falling down and saying, oh, our coach is leaving us, there's no point in keeping going, right? They go out and they win the whole damn thing, right? So I think that's a testament not only to the players on that team, but the coaches to keep them focused. So there's a lot of things there. I mean, I I, I think it's phenomenal that he won the NIT, obviously. Um you know, obviously he could have gone out and made the tournament and made it to the final four like FAU in that conference. But come on, you got to sometimes got to be realistic um, in this things. And I guess the NCAA tournament really wasn't realistic this year if you looked at the seating. Um, anyway, this from Brandon. I'm really hoping we have some real we schedule some real uh, non-conference games next season. Yeah, I think I think there'll be one or two more. Um, I'm not going to go out on the record and say exactly who or anything because I don't know, but. Um, it would be interesting to see kind of where they go um, because I, I I hear you. I'm right there with you in terms of like, hey, Maui was supposed to be better this year um, and it just it just didn't work out, right? Like it, it just it just didn't. And so um, you know, it's one of those things where I think they will have better play. And somebody just mentioned it. Aren't they playing Seton Hall? Yeah, they play in the Garden this year. I know that. That's the only non-con game I know about. Um, pretty similar to that Duke game a few years back. So they'll get to face off against the fighting uh, Sheet Holloways up there in Seton Hall. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree with you guys in that regard. I mean, I don't think you should just go out there and play top 25 teams the whole time. Like, you need games that are kind of, quote-unquote, pushover games in the sense that you need time out there for guys to develop and get real game action that maybe won't see it in close games, if that makes sense. So um, that's just kind of how my thought process is. Um, oh, you're talking to – okay, I got you. Thank you for clarifying that, Drew, on one of the comments. Yes, Tyler Perry. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's going to – I from everything I've heard – he is going to try and go pro, but I think he's going to keep his eligibility. Um, that's kind of everything I've heard. I don't know much more than that. That's just from a couple of UNT fans I know and one that covers the team. So I don't really know too much more than that on that front. Um, so let's see here. Um, I heard they were playing in the Bahamas this year, non-conference tournament. They may be. I I'll be completely honest with you guys. I get confused in terms of these schedules and these like games and everything because there are so many of them and they seem to have different names every year um, that I just forget where they're located. And I know tech is involved in one of them, but I just, I forget. I truly do. So the Bahama one, yeah, that might be true um, on that front. I do know the Seton Hall one that, that did ring a bell. That's from Chad. Yes, they, they do play Seton Hall this year up in the garden. I know they go up to the garden this year for sure. Um, this is from Adrian, who's been reaching out to all the players in the transfer portal that I keep seeing on Twitter. Uh, Grant McCaslin. He's the only one. <laughs> yeah, it's Grant McCaslin. You, you notice that once Grant McCaslin got hired, you start, started seeing those tweets. There was none before that. Nothing. Um, none at all. So it's been Grant McCaslin. Yeah, he's the one right now. Um, because as far as I know, I, I would, again, please correct me if I am wrong. Anyone in the chat, I will look over my text messages right now real quick. N nothing, um, from anybody that's talking to me about that. So, um, yeah, it's Grant McCaslin. I, I don't think there's anybody on staff right now other than him right now. So, um, and we'll get some more videos. I'm sure he's meeting with the media right now, um, in terms of, a little bit more of what's going on and potentially I, I would assume somebody asked about the coaching staff because you you just kind of have to um, at this point. That's the biggest thing because 
Grant McCaslin right now, he's focusing on trying to keep some of those players there, right? Like, again, I think it's very telling, and I'll run through the list one more time, that Pop was there, Jalen was there, Daniel was there, Lamar, Kerwin, Damarion, CJ, Kyron, Lindsey, right? Like, all those guys were there, and Devion Harmon would have been there, but he had his wisdom teeth taken out. So you think about the guys there, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would have been nine if Devion um, – could have been there, but he had his wisdom teeth taken out. So you would have had nine guys there. And again, I, I I would expect maybe one or two of those guys to enter the portal. I really would. I don't know who, but it's just, you know, it, it's just probably going to how it's go with it, how it's going to go with modern college basketball, right? Like, so you think about that. There's the potential. And I and I said this when Mark Adams resigned that I thought Texas Tech, a few more players than people thought would stay. And I still stand by that right now. Um, listen, just because people go in the portal doesn't mean they're not going to come back, right? That's not how it works. Perfect example is Robert Jennings. Robert Jennings has a very solid chance to come back to Texas Tech. So when you look at that, you had all those guys there. I think it's very telling in terms of, hey, they're there. He's had private conversations with them one-on-one. -on -one. And he's also met with them multiple times, he said, as a group. So I think it's really telling right now because, again, I mentioned Texas Tech is up against the clock in the portal. So are these guys. It's a, it's a It goes both ways, you know what I mean? So um, if they wanted to go in the portal, they're just losing time every day they don't go in, right? And them staying here at Texas Tech and not entering the portal, there's one less day that they can go in and be eligible for next season. And I think that that's big for Texas Tech. And if you look at the guys that were there, you know, I really think if you had a Grant McCaslin team, and let's just say these guys, right? These are the guys that were there. We'll include Devion because he would have been there, um, as I mentioned, right? Devion, Pop, Jalen, Bacho, Lamar, Kerwin, uh, Demarion, CJ, and then Kyron Lindsay, Right there, I mean, I think you, I, I think I named your five starters potentially, and it wouldn't be a bad starting five, right? And if you include Devion, you go Devion, Pop, Jalen Tyson, K. Ron Lindsey, Daniel Bacho. That's not a bad starting five if all those guys stay, right? Like, and then you could go out and get more wings and build depth, and you could still add a starter or two, obviously, move some guys to the bench and whatnot. Um, but you're in a solid spot, and I think you're in a, a better spot than a lot of people thought would happen right but just being a little closer to the situation in terms of knowing some of these guys and talking to some family members like this is kind of how I thought it would be um up until this point now again things can change some of these guys may not like the hire who knows like the, the only people that know if they do or don't like the hire is those guys right so um but I do think it was very very encouraging that they were at the press conference uh for Grant McCaslin and the first thing that Grant McCaslin did was point them out, right? He pointed them out. That's the first thing that Kirby Holcutt did as well. Pointed them out and said, thank you for being patient. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this family right now. And we're going to try and build something special here, right? Like he pointed out the players first, because let's face it, a coach is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this sport is all about the Jimmys and the Joes, ladies and gentlemen. It, it truly is. Um, this is from Ramon. Do you think there's a chance that some UNT players follow him to Tech? I do, um, and I want to pull up their roster real quick just so I can um, get their names right. Um, but, yes, I do think um, that some of them potentially can follow. Again, it's not a sure thing. Let's let's get that out of the way. Um, I don't want to put that out there at all, um, but I do think it is possible. Um, one was already mentioned, and I am going to butcher his name, Osaman, um, the forward. He averaged 11.6 rebounds. He's a junior. He's 6'10", uh, 230, athletic, big. Um, shot well from the field this year, about 55%. Doesn't take any threes. Um, he, he, he's gotten better at free throws, uh, about a 70% free throw shooter, averaged 1.3 blocks. I think that he's a guy to definitely monitor. He just entered the portal, as somebody mentioned in the chat. Um, I think you could see – um, Kai Huntsbury as well, um, into the portal, the senior. Um, but I think that the guy that everybody's most interested in by far is Tyler Perry. Um, and I think he's going to probably enter the draft, but keep his eligibility alive, if that makes sense. Um, 
but don't be surprised if he uh, stays at North Texas. Um, him and Ross Hodge have a very, very good connection. Um, but the guy that I'd probably um, know most is uh, Osman. Um, he's the forward, as I mentioned. And then somebody asked about Martinez. Um, yeah, he's six seven from Cibolo. Um, I I don't know if there's going to be much interest there um, from that front, but I I do think Osman would be a very very good. Um, ad for Texas Tech. Um, this from Matthew. Legit question: Do you even want everyone back? Some pieces just didn't fit. Well, they didn't fit because Mark Adams was trying to jam a square into a circle. Like, it's not gonna fit. Like that. That was my biggest thing last year with Mark Adams is he refused to make adjustments. Um, that's not a diss or anything. It's just the truth. Um, in a lot of ways. And when he did make adjustments, you saw it. And then he went back to the old ways. Right. And so I think if you have all those guys back, I wouldn't mind it. I, I think again, a fresh set of eyes on guys is never a bad thing. Now are all those guys going to come back? Those nine guys that I mentioned, let's be real. Probably not. Like, I mean, let's just, this just modern college basketball. Right. But I think when it comes down to it, the pieces you would love to have back, um, obviously Kyron Lindsay, I think he's a, Really solid player. I um, haven't seen him play yet, but I would love to have Lamar back. Daniel Bacho, Jalen Tyson, Pop, Devion. Like, I wouldn't mind having those guys back. And to be honest with you, even Kerwin and Damarion as well. I thought Damarion played pretty solid minutes when he actually got some later in the year. And Kerwin, he had a stretch there, but I just don't think he was conducive for the uh, fit that he was trying – or the box he was trying to be put in by Mark Adams. So – you know, we'll see what those guys have to offer, but I think a lot of those guys, um, yeah, I think they have a chance to come back for sure. Um, question about Scott real quick from Aaron Scott. Let's look at him real quick. Six, seven from spring Texas. Yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah. Good call drew. Yeah. If he scored what he, he's solid, he's just solid across the board. I don't, it's so interesting to me because, um, you know, it, it's like, do all these guys make the jump? And I think a perfect example is some of these, like Demarion Williams, right? Like I thought he'd make a bigger jump. He just didn't. And, you know, some of these guys in the portal, it's like a mystery box um, where, you know, hey, it's like, hey, you you could live up to your potential, but let's face it, there's an opposite side of the coin. Um, and sometimes that coin is weighted one way or the other. Um, so it, it's, it's one of those deals where I, I think you got to be very smart about it. I do like that Aaron Scott is a six, seven wing. He doesn't have a ton of production in terms of scoring or anything. Um, I think it would be more of like a Grant McCaslin knowing him and knowing what he can do type deal um, as a bench guy. But I think they're going to be a little bit more strategic this year in terms of going out and getting those long lengthy wings that you have to have in the big 12, right? Like you, you, again, I, I hate comparing guys to Adonis arms, but it's like, Adonis Arms is the best case scenario, right? Like that was a guy from Winthrop that had one year left that was kind of just playing like 20 minutes a game out there, um, really hadn't showed it on a big time level, but he had the skill set and then he developed a shot a little bit more, right? Like that is a best case scenario. But then you see also the other side of the coin, right? And guys just come in here and it just doesn't work. Um so I think that Texas Tech is going to be a little bit more strategic. But if you look at the pieces they potentially have coming back, Grant McCaslin is in a great spot. I mean, a much better spot than I think a lot of people anticipated. So, you know, you think about it again, you got Drew Steffi coming in, um, Kyron Lindsay. I'm going to go ahead and say I think Devion Armand comes back because him and Steffi are very, very close. Um, I think they want to play together. I think Jalen Tyson is probably going to come back. Um and then you have other guys as well. I think, you know, Lamar would be a great piece to have back. Come back and be that sixth man just full of energy off the bench. I would love to see Lamar Washington in a Ben McCollum offense if that was the route that they went when it came to um, the associate head coach or the offensive coordinator of sorts. Um, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see Pop back as well. Like, I think these guys will be more developed, and Tom is bringing that up right now. Of course, yeah, they'll, they'll be a little bit more mature. Um, they'll be a little bit more involved. I think they'll have – a little bit more of an understanding and don't get it twisted too. Let's say pop comes back. For example, I think people forget pop didn't practice last year in the summer at all. He was recovering from surgery. 
And so when he got back on the floor and he played in that first game, that was kind of surprising when it came down to it because he had only been practicing for about a month, right? So he didn't really get to practice over the summer. He's going to be a little bit more mature on the court. Jalen Tyson, that was his first year of college basketball, actually getting significant minutes. Really same with Daniel Bacho, right? Lamar Washington, obviously a freshman. Kyron Lindsey, he'll kind of be the quote-unquote Jalen Tyson of this group next year in terms of the position he was in where he was a mid-year transfer and now he hopes to make it and be a key contributor for the Red Raiders and I think he has a chance to be um but you're in a solid spot right now and by no means does that mean that you're going to be in a solid spot tomorrow but right now you're in a good spot if you're Texas Tech in my opinion um this from Drew as well or this from Joseph excuse me good discussion today appreciate you Joseph tuning in man means a lot truly does um this from Drew McCaslin has been extremely complimentary of Scott in the past, and I think at the minimum he'd be a very good defender. Was all over the court against OSU and Wisconsin, including a key block. Yeah, I think so too. I think he'll definitely be in the mix. Um, but I don't want to just automatically give him a scholarship, if that makes sense. Like I want to see the options out there. And, um, you know, if Scott is on the team next year, I'm all for it. I think he's a good player, but you may have better alternatives out there potentially if you're Texas Tech. Um I've got time for just a couple more questions. Maybe going to stay live for about four more minutes. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment a question. I'll uh, do my best to answer it. If you haven't followed me on Twitter already, be sure to do so there. Um, and yeah, uh, kid from Kansas in the portal, Cam, can't remember his last name. Yeah, Cam Martin, um, D2 guy, didn't really get much run up at Kansas. Uh, due to injuries. Um, so, yeah, I think that he's an interesting one. He's been linked to Tech a little bit, but I think he probably ends up somewhere else if I'm being fully transparent. Um, Chad, is Jason Jackson staying? Um, I mean, he's still signed and everything, so as of right now, yeah. Um, I, I'll say this, though, and I don't think there should be any more reading into it than this. Like, the guy that recruited him was Al Pinkins, so there you go on that front. But, yeah, as, as of right now, Jason Jackson – the point guard um, from Florida is still committed to Texas Tech as of this moment. Yes, he is. Um, let me look real quick. I saw somebody ask me a question um, on Twitter that I thought was a good one. Yeah, everybody on Twitter is posting about his wisdom teeth um, on the Devion Harmon front. So I want to put that out there one more time. Devion would be on that list if it wasn't for having wisdom teeth surgery. So there you go on that front. But um, I'm going to probably wrap it up there, guys. I appreciate each and one of y'all. Uh, this is probably the biggest live stream we've had so far. Um, appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, like the video. Put something in the chat. I'll be sure to answer it. And as always, you know what to do. Stay safe and wreck them tech.